Hi, Madam Clerk. Um, if you gentlemen are amenable to it, I think we'll go ahead and get started. It does appear to be two o'clock. I'm gonna have to back up. It's just gonna. You'll be fine. Um, anyway, okay. So uh, everybody welcome uh, to the uh, January 4th, 2023 Public Services Committee meeting, first one of the year. And you're all stuck with me as the uh, chairman of the committee for another year or until Richard decides otherwise, who knows? Um, but anyway, um, we have we appear to have the same membership on our committee this year, which I which I I, I am thankful for that. So um, anyway, we have relatively uh, lengthy agenda today. Um, just want to remind everyone if you do have uh, any uh, devices, phones, anything like that, if you'd be kind enough just to uh, mute it or or shut it off uh, during the meeting. That was specifically for you, Commissioner. Um, if you are available online, um, if you are attending online, please uh, please mute yourself uh, when you're not speaking. Um, all uh, public comment is limited to items that are specifically on the agenda for the committee today. If you have public comment uh, related to something not on today's agenda, you can always come and speak under other business at the uh, meeting next Monday night on the night. So um, if you do plan on coming up and speaking today, whether you're staff or member of the public, uh, please identify yourself at the podium. Uh, we're no longer having you come up, sit at the table. Just go ahead and go up to the podium, identify yourself for the record, and uh, we'll get started. Madam Clerk, first item, please. Number nine, ordinance third reading, annexing to the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming, land located south of Atlantic Drive, east of Taft Avenue. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Seth Lloyd. I'm with the city of Cheyenne Planning and Development Department. Um, this proposal, it proposes annexing land owned by the city. Um, and according to state statute, as long as the city is the sole owner of the land proposed to be annexed, um, we can annex the land. Um, so uh, that meets all the review criteria and the application hasn't changed since our last committee meeting, but I am available for any questions on the item. Thank you for the staff report, uh, Mr. Lloyd. Uh, just uh, stand by for, for questions if there are any. Um, are there any questions from the uh, committee for Mr. Lloyd? No, sir. Uh, how about yourself, Mr. Laborn? Okay. Thank you. Uh, any public comment related to this uh, agenda item, either here in the room or online? Any hands raised? Seeing and hearing no public comment uh, related to this ordinance on third reading, the chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, uh, another opportunity for uh, Comment, questions uh, from the committee? All right. Uh, hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Uh, Madam Clerk, the recommendation for uh, uh, this ordinance on third reading uh, will be for uh, approval at next Monday City Council meeting. Uh, item number 10, please. Number 10, ordinance third reading, amending the official zoning map of the city of Cheyenne, changing the zoning classification from County HI, heavy industrial, and County A-2 agricultural to MR, medium density residential for land located south of Atlantic Drive and east of Taft Avenue. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, once again, Seth Lloyd with the Planning and Development Department. Um, this proposal is to give a city zone to the land that's being annexed on the previous item on the agenda. Um, the severity zone that is proposed to be assigned is MR, medium density residential, um, which is also the zone adjacent zone to the north and to the west. Um, no changes, and once again, no changes in this application from the previous committee consideration, but I'm available for any questions. Thank you for that staff report, uh, Mr. Lloyd. Um, any questions for Mr. Lloyd from the committee? Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Uh, any public comment? Are there any raised hands, Jennifer? How about from inside the committee room? Seeing and hearing none, 
Uh, the chair would entertain a motion on this ordinance on third reading. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, any further questions or comments from the committee? Seeing and hearing none. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The recommendation, uh, Madam Clerk, for this ordinance on third reading will be for approval at next Monday City Council meeting. Uh, item number 11, please. Number 11, ordinance third reading, annexing to the City of Cheyenne, Wyoming, land located south of 6th Street and east of College Drive. Mr. Lloyd, it's been a long time. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Seth Lloyd. I'm with the Planning and Development Department. Once again, this annexation um, involves land solely owned by the city, um, and there's been no changes since it was last heard at committee, but I am available for questions. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Uh, any questions? Uh, again, we are on uh, item number 11. Um, any questions uh, for Mr. Lloyd on this uh, ordinance on third reading? Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Um, are, are there any public comments? Are there any uh, hand, hands raised online? Madam Clerk. Any public comment from uh, within the room? Seeing and hearing none, uh, the chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further questions and comments from the committee? All right, seeing and hearing none. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The recommendation for item number 11, this ordinance on third reading, uh, will be for approval at next Monday City Council meeting. Next item, please. Number 12, ordinance third reading, amending the official zoning map of the city of Cheyenne, changing the zoning classification from County P public to P public for land located south of 6th Street and east of College Drive. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, once again, Seth Lloyd with the Planning and Development Department. Um, the proposed zone change or zoning map amendment is to assign a city zone in concert with the annexation that was the previous item on the agenda. The proposed zoning is P public, which is an appropriate zone for city owned land. Um, and there's been no changes on this application since uh, the committee last heard the item, but I am available for any questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Um, Madam Clerk, please let the record uh, reflect that uh, Dr. Rennie uh, has entered the meeting. Uh, we're on item 12. Um, any questions from the committee for Mr. Lloyd. Okay, seeing and hearing none. Uh, how about uh, any hands raised online, Jennifer? Okay. Uh, any further public comment uh, from here within the room? M Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Um, I don't Mr. know exactly Lloyd. how to bring this forward. Um, this is Seth Lloyd of Planning and Development Department. Um, staff did receive an email from a nearby property owner on these projects. Um, so expressing support of having Greenway in the area, um, but they obviously haven't attended these meetings, but I just thought the governing body would be interested to know that we did have a member of the public comment in support of these applications. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd, for the reminder. Um, Madam Clerk, is that the email that... Uh... Okay, that is not this one. Okay. All right, um, so they were in support of it, Mr. Lloyd? Um, thank you. Um, any further uh, public comment? All right. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, moved and seconded. Uh, any further questions or comments? Uh, again, we're uh, we're on item number twelve. This ordinance on third reading. Uh, any further questions or comments from the committee? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. We're using these now. All right, thank you. Uh, those opposed? All right. Uh, the recommendation will be for uh, approval of this ordinance on third reading. Next item, please. Number 16, ordinance, second reading, creating chapter 2.54, boards and commissions, requirements generally of the municipal code of the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming, setting the minimum standards by which boards and commissions conduct public business. Uh, my understanding, uh, Madam Clerk, is that uh, uh, the main sponsor, uh, Dr. Aldrich, is not available, but she has asked um, 
city attorney Boster to provide the staff report. Are you comfortable doing that, uh, city attorney Boster? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Stephanie Boster, Cheyenne city attorney. Yes, Dr. Aldridge reached out to me early this morning and mentioned she wouldn't be able to make this meeting and requested that, that I give the staff report. So I will try to do so. Um, what you have before you is an ordinance change. It creates chapter 2.54 boards, commissions, boards and commissions requirements generally. Currently, this section doesn't exist in city code. It uh, will go between personnel system and right before the ordinances that establish the planning commission. What Dr. Aldridge intended was to make it very clear to boards and commissions that they need to comply with the Open Meetings Act, the Public Records Act, and Robert's Rules of Order. It's my understanding that she met with the chairman of all the boards and commissions to which individuals are appointed by the city, asked them questions about their experience on the board, and one of the things she came up with was that they weren't clear on how the Open Meetings Act works. They didn't know that they were required to comply with the Public Records Act, especially in, uh, in regards to publishing their agendas and keeping records of prior agendas and agenda items. And also they were clear on how Robert's rules of order work. So this ordinance lays out those requirements. It also requires that they attend a, um, a yearly uh, uh, presentation regarding Robert's Rules of Order, Order, Open Meetings Act, and Public Records Act. And that presentation will be given by myself. My intention is for, to record that uh, presentation so that if somebody is appointed during the year, they'll, they're able to pull it up and comply with city ordinance. Um, and with that, I am open to questions. Thank you, Attorney Boster. Um, any questions or comments from the committee? Um, for Attorney Boster or just uh, related to this uh, item? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, Mr. Laborn. Uh, Ms. Boster, so am I correct that with the creation of this ordinance, we are now uh, codifying the way that these uh, boards and commissions operate and that previously um, there was not such a uh, official uh, code to refer to. So you had different uh, boards and commissions. Uh, certainly some of them uh, are much more uh, formal and important, like the Board of Public Utilities. I'm sure they're aware of all this. But um, I agree with uh, Dr. Aldrich that there's really a need for a real understanding amongst those individuals who so generously help us and how important it is that we get their advice and that we understand uh, what they're doing. And furthermore, that that outreach goes out to the public through uh, some of the things that we have now with electronic communication, with uh, the ability to uh, see this material uh, as is stated in here, be placed on the website. So what we're really doing is creating a system of uh, basic information and those standards that did not exist. Is that correct? Mr. Chairman, through you to Councilman Laborn, that is correct. This is um, not, this has not been done before. This is a, an attempt at consolidation, I think, on how those boards and commissions operate. Thank you. Uh, further questions? It's further questions or comments from the committee before we move to uh, public comment. Mr. Chairman. Uh, go ahead, Dr. Rennie. I have several questions, but I'll save them for Monday when the sponsor can actually, or the author can actually answer them. But just in looking, um, you know, there are a couple of redundancies. It, it says in a couple areas that each member of the board present shall vote in, in section C and then later on in a8. Um, I don't know if we want to clear those up or not. And then the other question I have in section 2.5.040 says that the proceedings will be governed by Robert's Rules of Order. And yet you go on to, I mean, it's so prescriptive, it's almost like micromanaging. Was there what was the rationale? I mean, why refer to Robert's Rules of Order if you're going to dictate how the meeting is going to be run? 
And I don't know if you or the two co-sponsors can answer that part of it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, through you to Councilman Rennie. Uh, uh, my deputy uh, city attorney, John Brody, uh, drafted this at the request of Dr. Aldridge, but I believe the intent was to prescribe how these boards and commissions operate in practice. Uh, anything further from the committee for Attorney Boster? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, public comment. When you see the red, <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so the okay, there you go. Mr. Chairman, Laramie County Commissioner Gunnar Malm, appreciate your time today. Uh, Mr. Chairman and committee, so I just have a couple quick questions. First, um, there's a number of boards that we both joint appoint um, members to, and would this be an attempt to dictate uh, the actions of those uh, boards as well and the members who the county commission appoints, um, I guess, is one question. Um, another question uh, regarding uh, Robert's Rules of Order. I know a number of our uh, boards, especially some of our larger ones, like the Joint Powers Board and things like that, have a separate set of documents um, that created them and kind of outline how they are run. Um, my feeling is some of those boards operate well, as is, and Robert's Rules of Order, as it works for the City of Cheyenne, the County Commission has not formally adopted Robert's Rules of Order and, and doing our meetings um, as prescriptively. We kind of use it as a loose uh, basis, but we aren't, you know, at strict adherence to it. And we feel that sometimes that's more efficient for our meetings, obviously. Um, I think we both operate efficiently, so each system might work. But so my real question is, is this an attempt to prescribe behaviors to our board members as well? Um, and then my understanding is that if this is an ordinance, that there is a civil penalty for violation of this ordinance um, of $750. Um, so I'd have to ask, or I'd guess refer that to the city attorney. Um, but I, I just feel that it's kind of, we ask these people and, and like uh, Councilman Laybourne said, these people generously donate their time and really make our community go. Like without our boards, we don't have anything. And so uh, the risk of, and the penalty of $750 fine for not following Robert's Rules of Order, which probably nobody knows like Dr. Rennie knows, and the chances of slipping up are quite high. Um, I, I just fear that it would have a chilling effect on our ability to get the highest caliber individuals to serve on our boards. And so I just asked the committee to take those things into consideration. And if I could get some answers on the joint boards, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Uh from the committee for uh, Commissioner Mullen. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Well, uh, thank you, Commissioner Mom. You raised some very important points that uh, um, need to be reviewed. Obviously, uh, this is more of a city issue, but those joint boards obviously are very important and how uh, we relate to them is uh, Certainly, uh, your your point about uh, the county not adopting Robert's Rules of Order is uh, certainly important. So I, I think we can meet with the city attorney and review those issues and see if we can't uh, find a way, maybe we have her meet with your attorney and see if um, what the thought process is there. Because um, as one of the sponsors, uh, Certainly the intent that I have, and I believe that is the main intent of Dr. Aldrich, is city boards and commissions. And so uh, certainly we have those joint boards, and they're super important because of that joint nature. So uh, we'll, we'll be looking into that. And I would also say that uh, uh, that criminal penalty exists for many, many things in our code. And I have never seen it abused or uh, anyone, um, that's for really extreme cases that the court might find. That isn't for uh, telling anyone that, uh, it certainly would have a chilling effect if they thought they were possibly in that situation, but I'm quite confident that that would not occur just as uh, many other uh, uh, provisions of the code that have that penalty. Um, are there for extreme situations that 
have not arisen in my experience, but um, thank you for coming and uh, raising those points. I, I'm sure we'll be looking at them and attempting to determine uh, how that would work since um, that really does deserve some attention. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, just to clarify, I believe it was a civil and a penalty, correct? Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Bloom. I'm Charles Bloom, Planning and Development Director for the record. Um, just wanted to note that in the Planning and Development Department, we have several boards and commissions. We have the Urban Renewal Authority, the Brownfield Revolving Loan Author uh, Board, we have the Historic Preservation Board, Planning Commission, and the Board of Adjustment. Something we strive to do annually with all of our boards is we have a 101 training session. Uh, those typically occur in January and February where we discuss all of the items that are of concern in this ordinance. So that's something that our department um, undertook in 2019. And we continue to do annually. And then we do have new board members or committee members that are brought on. They're walked through the past presentation. So they're given, given some direction on how to function as a board, what is a violation of open meetings law, and also how do you make a decision? How do you look at the review criteria and evaluate an application for a decision? So just want to give you a heads up that there are some boards and committees that are receiving this training, um, and they um, can be administered at the department level as well. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. Um, Mr. Laybourne, go ahead. Um, Mr. Bloom, since you initiated, did you initiate that when you came here? Or was that here before you got here? And Chair, through you to Commissioner Laybourne, I initiated this for the entirety of the group. In the past, they had asked a consultant, uh, Joanne Garnett, she was with Orion Planning Group. She had occasionally done presentations to the Planning Commission, but not on a regular basis. Um, they had recorded a video, and that video was distributed to new members. Um, but when I arrived, I, when I came to the city, I realized that that was a piece that was lacking for our boards and commissions in the planning and development department, and made it an annual occurrence. Uh, thank you. So, did you see anything in this proposed ordinance that would be a conflict with the work that you already do in your department, Chair? Through you to Councilor Laybourne. I will have to double check a little bit more of the ordinance. I've not had a chance to review it in detail. I'm off the cuff. I just, I do need to look at the requirements that all members vote because that may be in conflict with the way our board of adjustment and our planning commission votes occur because typically the chair only votes to break a tie, similar to that of the committee meeting. Uh, thank you. We'll certainly be looking into that. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. Uh, Jennifer, do we have any hands raised online? No? Any further public comment uh, uh, related to item number 16 here in the room? Okay. Uh, seeing and hearing none, the chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Again, we're talking about this ordinance on uh, second reading. Uh, Further opportunity for uh, questions and comments um, from the committee before we call for a vote. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Laybourne. Well, certainly I'm glad we've had uh, some concerns raised here that we can address that can um, explain some of this, but I, I believe that this is a, is a necessary for not a um, onerous uh, effort to tell our helper volunteers that uh, they might face criminal process, but to help them understand what it is we do and how we do it under state law and the Open Meeting Act. That is always something that um, takes a little information to pe members of the public uh, that want to help us that have not done this. They don't, of course, don't read these things and don't understand that. So I would say that um, I think that this is a, a worthwhile step for city uh, boards and commissions. And 
so, some of these boards are more informal and some of them are uh, quite formal and have legal implications. But at the same time, they should operate under the same umbrella. And one of the key things I want to point out here that I'm sure will be um, something that will require some attention is the uh, section here, uh, 254020C, uh, each board and commission shall have no less than one designated staff liaison. The staff liaison shall be responsible for these four items, preparing the meeting agenda, compiling meeting materials, taking meeting minutes, and arranging uh, for that annual board report. So I think that's very important, and it certainly is a step that I believe will be a matter of discussion as to whether uh, that's appropriate and have uh, the different departments have the staff time to do so. But those recommendations are very important to us as council people, as well as the public, and, and certainly in reference to how a uh, action we might take might be uh, understood. So I hope that we'll be uh, looking at certainly um, bringing the, this to the attention of the mayor and seeing how uh, that's interpreted. But we've had a discussion lately about how uh, members of a, a council liaisons to different boards need to report. And I think that it's important that the report be the minutes and that the council person have that opportunity to comment or share any sort of information that might be uh, appropriate. But at the same time, um, those minutes should be posted um, I think there's room here for uh, consideration of posting those minutes as draft minutes so that they're not actually approved until a month later and finalized, but they do tell the story of what happened in that meeting. And that is an opportunity for us, certainly as council liaisons, to respond. So I know that that's a, a very important point here, but I did want to note that that is, that is a change. And some of these boards um, have some really quality people on them that do uh, not only attend the meeting and participate, but actually are, uh, for instance, the Mayor's Council for People with Disabilities has a member that is their secretary who does the minutes and is very professional at it. That is the case at this particular moment with that particular individual. Uh, there have been cases in the past where I was aware of um, where we had boards that were operating with volunteers doing the minutes and the report of the meeting. And sometimes uh, I, don't, I don't believe that's really appropriate for uh, those individuals to be tasked with that report. And I believe that report, um, certainly with uh, the changes that have happened, uh, we can have that information on our website. There's a extensive uh, issues here in terms of participation electronically. So this is an update I think that uh, certainly is worthy of discussion. I look forward to working on some of these issues that have come up in committee so that we can really better understand how, how that works because these people um, come in uh, depending on certainly some circumstances are different than others. But I think that, that what Mr. Bloom suggests and brought to his department uh, should be more widespread in some of these other committees and uh, certainly would be helpful, I think, to all of us if we had that easily available minutes, uh, and I believe draft minutes, which isn't in here yet, um, available shortly after the meeting. So, and that would also give us an opportunity um, to go discuss with that designated staff liaison uh, any issues we were interested in. And that's because it is difficult to uh, go to uh, individuals who are here for a meeting. Uh, they're, they're not readily available for us to discuss and certainly not readily available to uh, discuss those interactions that 
inevitably occur with recommendations of uh, our boards and commissions uh, towards actions before the body. So I hope we can work on this a bit and find some uh, answers. I look forward to working with the city attorney's office, but uh, this is a work in progress and I certainly welcome any uh, help that we can get in seeing uh, that we codify uh, these boards and commissions, how they're trained, how they report. And uh, this, I don't believe would be onerous. I believe it would be assistance to those individuals that help us out on the boards and commissions. Thank you. Anything further uh, from the committee? Uh, we uh, just to, to backtrack a little bit, um, Madam Clerk, we do have a motion and a second, correct? Thank you. Uh, anything further from uh, the committee um, before we call for a vote? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? No. Uh, the recommendation uh, for next Monday's city council meeting uh, for this uh, ordinance on uh, second reading uh, will be for approval uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Seagrave and Mr. Laybourne voting yes, um, Dr. Rennie uh, voting no, and uh, the chair uh, did not cast a vote. Next item, please. Number 24, resolution certifying compliance with Wyoming statute 15-1-402 for the city initiated annexation of tracts of land situated in portions of Sunnyside Edition and Sunnyside Edition second filing section 12, township 13 north, range 67 west of the 6 p.m., Laramie County, Wyoming. I think it, that's Mr. Lloyd's spot, isn't it? I know. I mean, is he going to get like sideways because you're you're taken into his gig or what i'm just i'll be careful mr. i'll be careful mr bloom go I'm ahead trying. go Perfect. ahead mr. Bloom. chair charles bloom not seth lloyd <laughs> planning and development director sorry seth if you would like to you can totally jump in here um, no, this is the this is a resolution to allow the city to proceed with a city initiated annexation. Uh, this is what we have dubbed County Pocket Number One. Uh, I'm going to share a screen which will show the area that is in County Pocket Number One. As you can see on the screen, this is the area north of Pershing Boulevard and located to the east of Ridge Road. Um, there are five county or five different parcels of land that are involved in these four county pockets. One of them is the former Wonder Bread site on the corner of Pershing and Ridge. The other is an area where the supply sergeant uh, used to be. Um, another is A1 Rentals and the another one is Big Paws Landscaping, which is number three, which they recently acquired that property. And the other is Wells Fargo. Um, that is the financial institution immediately south of the school. Um, with this resolution, what it what it does is it makes the finding that it meets the criteria for annexation. Um, in the resolution, there are several items listed. Um, number one, the annexation of the areas for the protection of health, safety, and welfare of the persons residing in the area in the city or town. Number two, the urban development of the area sought to be annexed would constitute a natural, geographical, economical, and social part of the annexing city or town. The area at number three, the area sought to be annexed is logical and feasible addition to the annexing city or the town and the extension of basic and other services customarily available to the residents of the city or town shall within reason be available for the area proposed to be annexed. Number four, the area sought to be annexed is contiguous with or adjacent to the annexing city or town and meets the requirements of Wyoming statute 15.1.407. Number five, if the city or town does not operate its own electric utility, um, the governing body is prepared to issue one or more franchises necessary to serve the annexed area pursuant to 151410. And number six, the annexing town, not less than 20 business days prior to, the prior to the public hearing, will send by certified mail notice to all the landowners and affected public utilities within the territory a summary of the <coughs> annexation report as required under subsection C of the state statute section. 
and they'll also provide notice of a date and time of the public hearing. Uh, regarding this, the city initiated annexation, the city has uh, moved forward with some voluntary mailings that we have done to alert these individual property owners that they are in an area which is subject to a city initiated annexation. Uh, we mailed notice to them on December 9th, 2022, and we also held a meeting here in person on December 19th at city at the city municipal con, um, complex to answer any questions that members of the public had, specifically members of the um, public that are within these properties. Uh, we did have two representatives show up, which represented two of the properties. Um, they are in support of the annexation. Uh, that is property owners number one and number two. Uh, we have not heard back from Wells Fargo, the, the bank, which is number five. Uh, we have not um, heard back from property owner number four, and we have been in communication with property owner number three, as they are looking to seek a development entitlement through the county planning office right now. So we are working with the county planning office and property owner number three on a potential path forward that will work for everybody regarding the development of that site. Um, the schedule for this, once this resolution is passed by the governing body, which would be um, approved on January 9th, 2023, this would allow the city to start the process with required notices, required publications in the paper. Um, this could lead to the first annexation ordinance being presented to the uh, governing body as early as February 13th or as late as February 27th. That would be one of those two meetings. Um, in addition, we would have to establish zoning for the area. That zoning would be considered at the February 6th Planning Commission meeting. Um, I'm open to any questions you may have regarding this resolution. Um, the chair does have a question for Mr. Bloom, but I'll go ahead and, and put that out to uh, to the rest of the committee first. Uh, if the committee has any questions for uh, Mr. Bloom, Mr. Chair, go ahead. Through you, Mr. Bloom, I use this particular area as an example all the time because of a fire that occurred. Can you just give us a real brief history of that and some of the issues that came up as far as who responded, who didn't? Chair, since I began working here in late 2018, there's actually have been two emergency events that I'm aware of in that area. One of those was a robbery at the Wells Fargo Bank where sheriff's deputies had to respond instead of city police. And the other one was the fire at the supply sergeant. I believe Chief Copper could better explain that. Um, but from what I, under, if, if necessary, what I understand is a fire was reported. It was late in the evening, uh, city police, showed up to close the street because the street was in the city limits. City fire was there on hand in the event that the fire spread to properties within the city. Meanwhile, the fire district responsible for the area, District 1, I believe, District 2, correct, the District 2 a volunteer department had to coordinate a response, send a send a truck and their arrival was significantly later, which resulted in additional property damage to the structure. So the annexation of this area would allow for a much quicker response time by units, whether it's the police office, the police department or the fire department um, from areas within the city instead of coming in from outside what is commonly known as the city limits. Thank you. Uh, for the chair asks, uh, are there any further uh, questions from the committee for Mr. Bloom? Um, if it suits everybody, I, I will go ahead and ask a question real quick. Uh, Mr. Bloom, I do have a question, not specifically about one of the um, highlighted properties, but I'm, I'm more concerned with this property in here with this uh, with this trailer park. Is this, my understanding again, is that it's uh, it's county, at least that's my understanding. Um, what is your knowledge of that? And is that is that area 
maybe a, another long, low hanging fruit or I don't want to get too far off topic with this particular, but I'm just, I'm just more out of curiosity about particular property. And chair and members of the committee, uh, the area that you see there on us is it Ostik, 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 Ostik. Uh, yeah. that court that is within the corporate city limits. That is not a pocket. The only other county pocket that is shown on this map are the residential homes on the west side of Ridge Road, immediately to the west of number two. Um, so that area is not correct. That area is the only other county pocket that is shown here. Um, in the area, there are some additional county pockets, and a lot of those lots are platted, so they would be fairly easy to create the annexation map and the legal description. They could be considered low-hanging fruit and that you could move forward with. At this time, we are um, really looking to uh, phase the annexations by ward, and we'd be looking to um, start the next annexation, uh, likely in Ward 1 in upcoming months. And we've also had property owners have reached out to us asking us to include them in the next annexation by the city. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. That, that answers my question. Um, any public comment for uh, Mr. Bloom? Or excuse me, any, did you have a question? Have, have have a question. Oh, go Mr. ahead. Chairman. Mr. Um, through you, Mr. Chairman, there are, you alluded to some houses across the street on the west side of Ridge um, in the area. And I think that if I'm correct, there's only like three along that stretch. Why, why did we not, as long as we're doing this area, why did we not include both sides of Ridge Road? Chair and Dr. Rini, that is a wonderful question. The intent of the first county pocket annexation was to include non-residential properties only. So we weren't annexing anyone that lived within a county island. Uh, occupied residential properties would be annexed in later city-initiated annexations. Anything further from Mr. Bloom? Thank you, Mr. Bloom. Uh, Jennifer, do we have any hands raised? Any uh, further public comment uh, from uh, within the room? Seeing and hearing none, uh, the chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Uh, this. Just to clarify, I have Councilman Seagrave making the motion and Councilman Lee Warren seconding. Neither of you used your microphones. Mine's on now. We we have a motion and a second for this resolution. Um, any further uh, questions, comments um, related to this uh, agenda item from the committee? All those in favor? Aye. Hi. Yes. Those opposed? Uh, the recommendation uh, for this resolution will be for adoption at uh, next Monday's uh, City Council meeting. And uh, with no other items on the agenda, we are adjourned. <laughs>